All right, what's up guys? Um, in this video, we're going to build a basic neural network without any hidden layers to solve a problem. I'm also gonna explain pretty in depth how a neural network actually learns. So let's start with the problem set. Each row is a training example of three inputs and one output. We want our neural network to be able to predict what the output should be for the new situation. Now, it's pretty easy, so you can yeah, pause the video and try to guess for yourself. So yeah, um, as some of you might have guessed, when the first input is one, the output should be one as well. But when it's zero, the output should be zero. So yeah, we want our neural network to be able to tell that this should be one. Um, as I said before, our neural network will have no hidden layers. A neural network like that is called a perceptron. This is what it, what it looks like. So we've got our inputs, then the main neuron, the outputs, and the synapses. The synapses are the connections between the inputs and the neuron. And uh, yeah, so this is a basic architecture. We can now start adding values. First, the input values. In our case, this will be either zero or one. After that, each synapse is given a weight. Um, I'll go further into this later, but for now, you just need to know that weights are very important for getting the right outcome. Weights with either a large positive or a negative number will have a strong effect on the neuron's output. Uh, before starting the coding, we'll set uh, each uh, way to a random number. So these then go to uh, the neuron and we get an output. To understand what happens in a neuron, we need a little math. So the neuron basically gets an output by doing a weighted sum of the inputs. So this is just, uh, you take the sum of all input values uh, multiplied by all their corresponding synapse yeah, weight values. That weighted sum then goes through a normalizing function so that we get an outcome that's between zero and one. For our normalizing function, we'll use uh, the sigmoid function. Now, it doesn't matter what value you get here, the corresponding value will always be between a zero and a one. So we now know enough uh, yeah, to build a basic form of the perceptron in Python. So let's get coding. All right, so first we're going to have to import NumPy as NP. Uh, then we'll, um, yeah, we'll define the, the normalizing function, which in our case is the, the sigmoid function. So this takes in an x value, not just a value, and it returns any value between uh, 0 and 1. So in Python, the sigmoid function is written like this. One plus x plus. All right. Uh, next, we'll define the training example. So we have the inputs, which is a three by four matrix, and each row is a, a training example. So np dot array of. Okay, the first row was zero zero one. Then. We had one, 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 zero, one, and finally zero, one, one. Okay, so this are these are the training inputs. Next, we'll define the training outputs. Um, these are NP array of. Okay, so this first was zero, and then we get a one, a one, and another zero. Now, yeah, this is a row, but we'll transpose it so that it becomes a four by one matrix. Um, next, we have to initialize our weights, but we're gonna do this by yeah, assigning random values to the weights. So it's important that you, you get the same random values as I do, because we're gonna need them later in the video. So we'll seed the random numbers. Yeah, which basically basically uh, makes sure that you and I both get the same random numbers. So synaptic weights. Uh, we're gonna create a three by uh, one matrix because we have three inputs and one output value, and uh, these will be uh, random values from minus one to one with a, a mean of zero. There's a lot of science that goes into weight initialization, but at this point, it's not 
really necessary to know all that. So uh, 3 by 1 and a minus 1. All right. Um, yeah, so throughout the process, we're going to be recording a couple things. So it's important that we sometimes print some stuff. So random starting synaptic weights are synaptic weights. Right. Um, yeah, so now for the main loop. For iteration, in uh, we're going to define a range and we're going to start with one because we haven't really talked about how to train a model yet. But uh, yeah, stay with me, it's going to be okay. Um, okay, so let's set the input layer. Oh, wait. Yeah, let's set the input layer to be our uh, training inputs. And then we get the outputs, which is, uh, yeah, that, that random formula we've seen where we take the weighted sum and then pass that through the sigmoid function. So let's do that. Sigmoid of the np dot dot. Basically, this is a product that um, does element-wise uh, multiplication on matrices, which is what we need. So we multiply the input layer by our synaptic weights. And bam, we get the outputs for the first iteration. So print outputs after training. Outputs. All right. Okay, uh, let's see what that gives. So I'm gonna run this. And yeah, these are the input values of the synaptic weights. Pretty random indeed. And these are the outputs after training. So normally, after training, we should get something that looks like this. But as you can see, uh, yeah. All right, so uh, let's clear this all up. Say that we take the first training example, and we also have our uh, starting synaptic weights, which are these guys. Um, let's put those both in the formula. So the formula was the error weighted sum. Okay, like that. And if we fill these in, we get minus 0 0.999. Okay, great. Um, if we pass this through the sigmoid normalization function, we should get our first output. Now, let's do that. So minus 0 0.999 gives exactly what we need. Okay, great. It works. Um, now, of course, the outputs are wrong because the weights are initialized as random numbers. Uh, this is why we need a, a training process. So this is what it looks like. First, we take the inputs from the training example and put them through the special formula uh, we just saw. Um, then we calculate the error, which is the difference between the outputs we got and the actual output. Now we can adjust the weights accordingly, uh, according to the severeness of the error. Then we repeat the process 20,000 times. So yeah, here we calculate the error. Okay, so this whole process is called uh, backpropagation. And you might wonder, well, how do, we, how do we know by uh, which values we have to adjust the weights? Now, it's a good question. And the answer is yeah, another formula, which is called the error weighted derivatives. Um, <clears throat> it looks like this. We multiply the error, which is a difference between the output and the actual output, with the input, which is either a 1 or a 0. And then we take the gradient of the sigmoid function at our output. All right, uh, let's clarify that. So firstly, we want our adjustment to be proportional to the size of the error, which is why this is here. Um, and secondly, we multiply by the inputs, which is either a one or a zero. If the input is zero, the weights aren't adjusted. And finally, uh, we multiply by the gradient of the sigmoid curve. Well, why? Let's look at this. Um, if the output is a large positive or a negative number, the weight was heavy, which indicates that the neuron was pretty confident in its output. Now, we don't want to mess with weights that were pretty confident, so let's look at the derivatives at large numbers. As you can see, these get smaller as uh, the numbers get larger, and they get larger as the numbers are smaller. 
small numbers indicate of, of little trust, uh, little confidence. And so we need the, to adjust these weights um, yeah, accordingly with a bigger adjustment. Now, large numbers, we don't need to uh, adjust these with big numbers because yeah, confident neurons um, are best left alone. Now, let's see this process in action. Um, yeah, so first, our inputs are given. Then they go through the synapses to the neuron, which uh, then calculates the output. Now, the output is then compared to the actual output, and the error is calculated. Weights then get uh, updated accordingly. And the whole process is repeated. Now we can code uh, the first, the second part. Okay, so first we're cal we'll, we'll calculate the error, um, which is yeah the training output minus the actual output. No, the actual output minus the training training output. I'm sorry. Um, then we'll do the adjustments. Now, for calculating the adjustments, we remember we need the, the sigmoid derivative. So let's just first um, define that. Sigmoid derivative takes in a value and returns the derivative of that value. So return um, x times 1. All right. So adjustments equals the error times the sigmoid derivative of our output. Um, then we can ad adjust the synaptic weights accordingly, and this is done like this. Weights. Again, that dot product, never forget. Input layer. And we have to transpose this so that it matches t. And we multiply that by the adjustment. OK, uh, now let's print the synaptic weights after training. Okay, yeah, of course the iterations, we can now set them to the normal number because we actually have the training numbers. All right, let's do that. Okay. And indeed, you can see uh, the outputs are pretty close to the actual outputs. Um, if we iterate even more, so let's say we iterate 50,000 times, yeah, the outputs will become, wait, let's just crank that up a little, 100,000 times. This might take a while. All right, so we can get very, very close to our output, but because, yeah, the properties of a sigmoid function is that you never really actually get to a one unless you, yeah, unless you iterate an infinite amount of time. Uh, and it's, yeah, an in infinite amount of times. Okay, now <clears throat> this was for demonstrating how a neural network actually learns. In the next video, uh, I'll show you how to convert it, this to a usable neural network where you can provide your own inputs after it has been trained. Now, this code is already available on GitHub uh, if you can't wait for the uh, next episode. So uh, check it out. And yeah, guys, uh, thanks for watching and leave a like if you enjoyed it.